So here's a histogram that we're going to analyze. Now, suppose I collected all the points on a quiz and I, I had a list of uh, points that my students scored. So that is our raw data. And the next thing I decided to do was to analyze these data. So I uh, made a distribution, I summarized it in the form of a distribution. And this is how I tabulated it. There was a range of values of points from, uh, let's say, 8 to 13 and so on. And in each range of values, I wrote down the counts, how many students scored in that range. OK, so these are all the counts. So this is a distribution. Once I have a distribution, uh, what I did was I constructed a histogram. And this is what my histogram looks like. So now we're going to see by just looking at the histogram um, what the story behind this histogram is. So let's see what the variable is. The variable is points scored on an exam. OK, so that's the variable that sits on the uh, X axis or the horizontal axis and the counts sit on the Y axis. So let's answer the first question. It says how many students are in the class? So basically what we do is we look at the heights of these bars of the histogram. We call it a histogram because this is a quantitative variable. It's not categorical. It's not a bar graph. It's a quantitative variable. So what we construct is a histogram. So how do we figure out the number of students in this class? So we look at the first bar. So the range of values, let's say from 8 to 13. I don't know what it is, but let's just say it is 8 to 13. There are three students who scored in that range. How many students scored in this range? It is seven. The number of students who scored in this range, whatever that number is, or the numbers are, is 14 and so on. Now, this tells me <clears throat> how many students scored in each uh, class or range of values that we have in our distribution. And when we add all these numbers, that gives us the total number of students in this class. OK, so that's the first thing that we can figure out. The next question is, how many students scored? And let's see what the scores were. The scores of the students overall started around here. Let's say approximately 8. We are not being exact here. Through, let's say that's a 97 or a 95. So the, the total range of values of scores is from 8 through 95. But if you have to figure out how many scored uh, between 0 and 50, we're going to only add the numbers up to this point. OK, so approximately, let's just say that's 50. Let's be approximate, although that's 50. So the numbers we're going to add are 3, 7, 14, 5, and 1. So that gives us the total number of students who scored uh, in the range 8 through 50, or 0 through 50, if you would like. Right, 0 through 50. Now, how many students scored from 50 to 98? The rest of the students scored from 50 through 95 or 98. We don't know what it is. Just let's just be approximate here. What is the overall? So we're looking at it overall now. What is the range of scores obtained? So it could be anywhere starting at this point, which is 8, up to 95 or 98, whatever that number is. Remember, we don't uh, expect exact answers here. So it'll be about 8 to 98. What is the shape of the distribution? Now let's look at this. If the distribution, I'm going to draw a line here, ended here, OK? Let's just say it ended here. What would we call that shape roughly? Remember, it's all roughly. It would be roughly bell-shaped, a symmetrical bell-shaped. Roughly speaking, it is a symmetrical bell-shaped distribution. But 
This histogram goes on up to 98, but you'll see that there is another distribution, which is again roughly uh, bell-shaped. So what we have here is basically two bell-shaped distributions together in one data set. Now, usually uh, scores in a class are bell-shaped distributions. Um, weights of people is bell-shaped, heights of people is bell-shaped, any sort of measurement like, for example, GPAs of students in a large university, they're usually bell-shaped. So what does a bell-shaped distribution tell us? That the extremes, so that is if we're looking at one bell-shaped distribution, this is the ex extreme. This is low scores and this is high scores in that particular range. So the very high scores is less common. The very low scores is less common. So that's why you have fewer people in the higher range of scores and fewer people in the lower range of scores and the middle uh, bars are high which tells us that the middle is more popular right more populated so lots of measurements in the real world are bell-shaped distributions and usually when we take uh, scores or um, values of or, or points scored on an exam in a large class it's usually one bell-shaped distribution but here, and one bell-shaped distribution is called a unimodal. This is a peak, okay? This is called unimodal if there's only one bell-shaped distribution. But here we have another peak. So this is called a bimodal distribution. And that's how you would describe this distribution because it has two peaks. It is called a bimodal distribution. And we were talking about this, we uh, scores in a large class. If we scores a point scored on an exam in a large class, it's usually bell-shaped. So why does this distribution have two bell-shaped curves? It almost looks like there are two uh, groups of students. One that didn't perform on the test very well because their scores were only from 8 through 50 and one group that performed better with ranges of scores from 50 through 100. So if you see a bimodal distribution, usually it would indicate that there are two groups with two uh, different range, uh, range of values, in this case scores. So our first group, you can say that the first uh, bell-shaped curve is our first group and our second bell-shaped curve is our second group. So our first bell-shaped curve scored in the range 8 through uh, 50, roughly speaking, and our second group scored from 50 through 98. So our second group performed better than the first group because the range of scores was higher and there are fewer students. If you add these numbers in the second group, it'll be smaller than the uh, size of the first group, but the performance is definitely better because it the scores at, are at a higher range. So a bimodal distribution usually indicates two different types of groups mixed together. Here, the two groups of students have two different characteristics. One is the scores are not great and the other one has better scores so we don't know what the reason behind it is we could speculate that the first group of students did not study for the test and the second group of students studied for the test uh, and it's possible that um, maybe there was an email sent out about the test that this first group did not receive we don't know we can only speculate so that is how you would analyze a bimodal distribution.